back for more Oblivion. We're going to talk to the captain. If you're here to help, then free any slaves that you find and execute any alien soldiers who refuse to surrender. Otherwise, stay out of our way. <coughs> now, see, I don't even think we should be really attacking these guys. Please! Help me to escape! Help the elite since I should free the slave. If you're well, I mean, almost there. <laughs> Soldiers been dispatched and slaves have been freed. And Drossel's now liberated. Thank you for freeing me. You're welcome. And actually, this this one is a little bit better than the Knights of the Nine Armor, so I'll wear it for now. Thank you for your assistance in liberating Vindasel. Tell me about El Ash. Wait, what's with the beard? I've been growing this beard in preparation for a journey into Skyrim. Oh, but, alright. Uh, tell me about El Ash. She's our leader, and the leader of the Slave Rebellion. If you have any funny business in mind, remember that she's protected by two demigods. If you want to talk to her, speak to Mori House at Fanicicle. She's our lead. Alicia is freeing slaves throughout Sirod. Her rebellion grows stronger by the day, and the end of alien rule is only a matter of time. May the eight guide your way. I really, I'm kind of regretting not grabbing more stuff, but like, whatever. Oh, I'm really curious to see if you can like get back here. That'd be really cool. This is why the aliens fail. That's why, that's why. That's why they don't exist anymore. Really. It's a very cool statue. It almost looks like a hologram. Maybe it is. You know, the theory is that plenty of white strike is basically... <laughs> <laughs> this is the theory on Tesla, alright? So don't 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 start like calling me crazy. This is literally what some of them say. They say that Colonial White Streak is basically a cyborg. Oh hello slaves. You know they had armor here. Oh fuck! That's more than I was expecting. I'll admit it. Also, one thing I am glad that they thought about off the voices for the aliens. 
because if they didn't, you would be here, you know, just ah. the rest of the phrases. Like, just crazy shit. Why the, the ball is so good flicker here. I gotta say. Yeah, I have no idea why these aliens are just fucking absurdly strong. <laughs> Um, we're, we're, we're dropping it. <laughs> I, I don't care. I don't know what's up with the aliens. The ones inside, after I went th through there a second time, were absurd. <laughs> How many copies of the alien stuff do I have? I only have one. It has custom music! Listen. That's a... Uh, why are you wearing that? Do not fear. Serious question. Adolescing stuff off right now. Good. I'm LARPing as an alien, and I almost have no clothes on. I like it. I like it. I I, I like that a lot. That there's almost nothing on Imperial Isle. Now, as I stated in a couple videos back, the idea was that Cyrodiil, at the time of the aliens, was much more of a jungle. So, obviously here, they're kind of going with the true retcon where it was it's always been kind of forest fantasy paradise. Which I personally disagree with, but... Respectable, because, I mean, listen, uh, th this would have been absurdly hard just to do this. I mean, even copy and pasting this over, like, even if you control C, control V, for instance, the entire Cyrodiil map, practically speaking, it would have still been a bit of a challenge, because you've got to be figuring that, you know, there's, there's, like, caves and fortresses and spawn points that you need to worry about. So, uh, I I respect what they did, uh, but obviously, would would I have preferred if it was much more jungly? Yeah, sure, sure. I think that would have been cool, but I do like this because it's almost like it's how do I say this? Like Cyrodiil, truly untouched, right? There's almost nothing here. It's almost completely like barren, almost. I mean, like, I have no idea if there's... Like, these are obviously the major alien settlements that you're seeing here. Eclipse and Tarn, Riel, Cedor, all these all these places. Uh, and, you know, maybe we'll go to all of them. I don't know. But... It'll be cool. Okay, so this does 40 now. Let's, let's see what all the chainmail stuff does. Because I'd prefer to be wearing that 
Yeah, I'll, I'm gonna do those. Because they'll, they'll respect me. You know, it's like, it's like I have, um... Like... Yeah, even this would be considered advanced between them, right? Like, even chainmail. But, yeah. It's a guar! Hey, bud! Oh, I'll remember you, guar buddy. Oh, God, more aliens. Let me turn up the difficulty again. Just try it again. It's very ancient Greece feel. It's really cool. Versus, like, Egypt. Oh, here are all the slaves that we freed. What's going on? Is this boar hostile? Oh damn, I'm gonna have to find Caesar at some point. Welcome. That's it. Welcome. Question. They are considered to be Imperials, interesting. Because at the time, they were still considered to be uh, Needs. Or Syrids, or whatever. Very cool. Gives you an entire new vibe to these alien ruins, like what they were possibly used for. I'm sure glad to have you on our side. It shows that not all elves are evil. Yeah, I know. I'm kind of a fucking chad. I once took an arrow to the knee. Thank the eight I was wearing knee armor. Sorry, I'm, I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm gonna kill myself. They say that Aurorans are fused to their armor. Which is why it can't be removed. I once... It seems odd putting up tents indoors, but then again, these aliens don't seem to understand privacy. Lord Crusader, I knew you would eventually end up here. My, am I glad to see you. And you'll never believe who else is also eager to see you. How'd you get here? Tell me about the Grey Fox, though. <laughs> I saw Gareth's portal implode and pull you into it. Shortly after, I was pulled in as well. I ended up near Vindasel, and tried to look for you even though I wasn't sure that we both ended up in the same place. Some Elysian soldiers had just started a raid on Vindasel. The captain spotted me and instructed one of his scouts to escort me to safety. And that's how I ended up here, in Fanica Cycle. Fanica Where are we? I'm sure you figured it out already, but we're technically still in Tamriel. Oh, it was 4,000, not 3,000. Gareth's portal sent us 4,000 years into the past, into the first era. This is the actual year that White Gold Tower was captured by Elysia's slave rebellion, and the Aeliad Empire was brought to an end. As a student of First Era history, I'm really happy to be at such a major turning point in history. But at the same time, I'm worried as it's no accident that Gareth chose to come here. I don't know what he plans to do, but if he changes the course of history, it could be catastrophic for the Septum Empire as we know it. Among literally everything else, I agree. 
Who else wants to see me? You won't believe this, but it's Saint Alicia herself. She's also accompanied by her demigod companion, the winged bull Mori House. Mori <laughs> House, what a fucking meme he was. But I'm sure oh, the genius. one you'd most want to meet is the one whose armor and weapons you've been using. Pelinor Whitestrike himself. I've told them about some of our adventures. <laughs> and how we ended up here in Sea Road. Just remember not to reveal too much about the future. Especially about Umaril, the outcome of the rebellion, and me being Queen Alicia's descendant. Don't you think it was- uh, whatever. I've heard of such time portals, but thought they were impossible to create. But so were Oblivion Gates, until the Siege of Kvatch proved otherwise. I mean, yeah, but that didn't happen yet. Creating them requires an Elder Scroll and destroying several artifacts that were made by the gods during the destination time period. Since these priceless artifacts are destroyed in the process, few would dare experiment with such magic. With eight First Era Divine artifacts in one spot, it's no wonder Gareth wanted the Crusader's relics. Okay, let's just kind of provide an attempt for us to stay in. See you! Okay, great. This is my tent. Move, Agata. I'm assuming that she probably brought those here. I think that's a fair thing to assume. What can I do? I heard that you're from the future. Is that true? Do we win the war? <laughs> yes? I heard- I heard- Is that what they're all gonna say now? Welcome. Feel free to browse through my wares. Oh, good. You got nothing, Chief. Oh, jeez. Um. Just whatever. Fuck you. Goodbye, Sir Knight. It seems odd putting up ten. Really, and I am. You have no idea how into this I am right now, though. Because, like, I am just amazed. I did not know that you would be going back in time. Welcome! So you're just talking potions, right? Alright. What is some spells? Oh, I need this. <laughs> um... Oh, water breathing would be fucking so useful. I don't think we're gonna get any of this then. It's fine. Goodbye, sir. None of it's unique, any, so. Did you say Sir Knight? <laughs> Do you even know what a knight is? <laughs> what? See you. They say that a. Hey, Pelinal. Pelinal? Do, do you want to talk? Hmm. So you're the one they call the Divine Crusader a few thousand years from now, eh? You dug my armor out of the ground and then fought Umaril in a dream. That doesn't make you a hero in my book. Oh well. Tell me about the queen. She is known as the Slave Queen, for she rose above her humble roots as a slave to lead the rebellion that would overthrow the Aeliad Empire. Never in my travels have I met a mortal who displayed such wisdom or was so attuned to the gods. They're really going with this idea. She has forged alliances with the rebel 
Aeliad kings, the Needs, the Bretons, and even the gods themselves. With her unbroken string of victories against the elves, the fall of the Tower of White Gold is only a matter of time. Hey, can we restore these? You want to repair my armor and weapons after they've been buried in the ground for a few thousand years and then burned by magic fire? <laughs> I hope you have plenty of time. The technology to repair them won't be available for a few thousand years. And even if you found a way to repair them, these armor and weapons were blessed by the eight. And they only bother with a worthy hero like me. Well, fuck you. <laughs> if you can somehow repair the relics and are deluded enough to try talking to the gods, then be my guest. You'll find the Shrine of the Eight hidden behind a waterfall west of Sard. And there you can pray to your heart's content. Bet. But I can tell you now that they're not fond of silly little mortals with delusions of grandeur. Well, good, because they're not Don't delusions. Don't blame me if they ignore you, or worse, strike you down with a bolt of lightning for your belligerence. Thanks, though. Hmm. I bet you he's a Nord. That? Hey, well, hold on, Queen. I need to talk to this dude. Yo, what's up? Greetings, Lord Crusader. I have heard much about you from your friend, Naomi. It is both an honor and a marvel to receive a visitor from another era. This is, this is really strange. Kalanol is always boasting that his armor and weapons are from the future and can't be recreated. Yet I know that he traveled extensively with a talented blacksmith named Vulcanus, who maintained his armor. It will be worth your while to talk to him. As for reconsecrating them, you'll have to ask Pelinol about that. I am Morehouse, the first breath of man. I was granted the Nordic powers of Thuum by oh. Kynareth and sent here to aid in the liberation of humanity. She is known by many names. She was named Alesh by her followers, and this led to the more familiar corruptions Alashut, Esha, and Alessia. Another title was Paravant, meaning first of its kind. From that, the names Paraval, Pevish, Perithu, and Perif were derived. But as her lover and consort, I know her as Paravanya, First Empress, Lady of Heaven, and Queen Utsirod. Can you imagine getting fucked by a bull? Can you, can you just imagine- Farewell, like Lord Crusader. Greetings, <laughs> He wants to stay far away from adventuring nowadays. But last I heard, he had settled down in Sersen. He'll probably send you on a quest for some exotic raw materials first, before he'll help. Farewell, Lord Crusader. Cool. Alright, what's up? Welcome, Crusader. I have long foreseen your arrival here today, and sense that you have an important role in events to come. You've foreseen it? Yes. As a slave, I prayed to the Aedra for liberation from the Aeliads. My prayers were answered in the form of three visions of things to come. The third vision was a harbinger. Palinul's arrival. While this has come to pass, part of the vision has long perplexed me. For in the vision, 
Pelinol's every action was shadowed by a mortal clad in the same armor, something I thought impossible. Yet, with your rediscovery of Pelinol's artifacts in a future era, and your arrival here today, my understanding of the Third Vision is now complete. The Aeliads have enslaved our kind for too long. We are freeing slaves across Syrod, and they in turn are bolstering our numbers. For every slave that you free, we will pay you a reward of 200 gold. Cool, but I don't give a shit. For freeing the slaves. 2,000. Wow, okay, that's kind of fat. For every... Tell me about my role. I sense that you will play an important role in future events. But before you can, you must restore that which grants you powers from the Eight. Only by recovering, repairing, and then re-consecrating the artifacts that you call the Crusader's relics, can you hope to succeed. You are in possession of all eight of the Crusader's relics. Yet, they are damaged beyond use, and are tainted by Daedric magic. You must seek the aid of both Mori House and Pelinor to ensure they are repaired and reconsecrated. May the eight guide your way. I heard that Umaril the Unfeathered is actually a half elf. Could that be true? Oh. This is so sad. Oh well. I wonder what that is, though, because it's on both sides. Hmm. Lord Crusader, are you heading off? Bet. So they know of a way to repair them? That's great! I know. Queen Alicia has asked me to study the Adabal, so I'll be here in Fanicasekul if you need anything. Yes, the Adabal, meaning godstone in the Aelid language. They are Aelid soul gems of great power. You see the red diamond that Queen Alicia is wearing around her neck? Yes. That's actually Chimel Adabal, the godstone that eventually became the Amulet of Kings, Chim. as worn by Uriel Septim. It turns out that there's two others just like it, and I've been given the chance to study them. Oh, those are the things on the side, okay. See you! Oh, God, we are really going, huh? <laughs> I have to get them reforged, so, oh my God, we're going to be going all over. Anga! We're really going to be going over all the place. Oh, damn. It's nuts. All right, next time, we'll continue. Thank you all for watching.